Um, I'd like to open the uh, March 10th meeting of the Planning Board of Northampton. Um, we traditionally start off every night by asking if there's anyone here who has public comment on something other than what's on the agenda. So it's just a way for uh, encouraging feedback or comment from the public. Is anyone here for something other than the, uh, the uh, uh, I'm sorry, I need my glasses, the Bridge Road, Hatfield Street. Do you have public comment about something other than the Hatfield Street project? Okay. So um, that is it may. Um, I'd like to uh, open, um, take the uh, first agenda item, which is the site plan review for LP Audette Builders Common Driveway that serves two duplexes and two single family residences. Site plan review for residential structure setback further than others on block face at 68 Hatfield Street. Map ID 18C-45. Um, presentation. Good evening. My name is uh, Bill Cannon. I'm a landscape architect. And uh, with me tonight is the uh, builder of the Ascent LP, uh, Larry Audet from LP uh, Builders, Inc. Um, so we're here tonight to present uh, uh, a project to the planning board. Um, and uh, afterwards, we can, I guess, have a discussion about it. There are some issues uh, that we'd like to present to the planning board that are different. Uh, than uh, the plans that you see in front of you. So we want to kind of get that out and uh, kind of iron it out a little bit and uh, hopefully we can kind of, you know, uh, proceed with some common understanding. Um, the, the plans that were submitted, uh, as you, as uh, was briefly just described, uh, was uh, for uh, four lots and on the four lots we were proposing two uh, a duplex on two, uh, two <coughs> lots, so two duplexes, and two singles uh, on on two of the lots, and um, we we brought a revised plan. Uh, what we'd like to do is to do duplexes on each of the lots, so where we have a total of uh, six units now on the plans that you see before you, uh, we'd like to do eight uh, units. So in other words, a duplex on each on each lot, and as we understand it from the zoning bylaw, the uh, uh, the duplexes are allowed by right on a lots uh, insofar as if we have the uh, the right setbacks and the area and everything else, uh, which uh, we we do uh, for um, the lots. Uh, they had to be slightly modified, which we'll show you on the plan, to accommodate. Uh, uh, one of uh, one of the uh, the duplex units uh, because we have a freestanding garage that we're proposing with it, and I'll explain to you once we get the uh, once we get it up on the, uh, the screen here. Just uh, how to kind of go, or I can kind of show you, Carolyn. Should I just kind of continue on the? Yeah, why don't you start here? And okay. I'll start it up. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, the plan that you had, uh, we had we had a duplex proposed for the corner lot of Bridge Road and Hatfield Street, and a duplex for this lot right in here. <coughs> this was a single, and this was a single. Uh, what we'd like to do is put a duplex uh, on this on this lot and a duplex on this lot right in here. Uh, these two duplexes would have freestanding two-car garages. That would be used by the owners uh, of of these uh, duplexes uh, on these two lots right in here. The concept is still the same in that uh, the driveways and everything else would come off of a shared driveway that would enter and exit off of Hatfield Street. Um, as you can see, it kind of uh, loops around, comes back onto Hatfield Street. Uh, that is the same as it's shown on the site plan. Um, and uh, one of the compelling reasons for doing the shared driveway, which came out of our roundtable discussions with the departments was so that we could avoid having any kind of driveways or minimize the number of driveways on Bridge Road. We know Bridge Road is, is 
pretty busy and um, by avoiding uh, having driveways coming out on Bridge Road, we avoid that conflict, uh, we think pretty successfully, uh, with uh, the traffic flow on Bridge Road. And uh, like I say, this was, this came out at the round table discussions and seemed to be, uh, everybody seemed to be kind of uh, really strongly in favor uh, of trying to um, have the, 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 the uh, service to these units off of Hatfield Street. Along with that, we also are showing on the plans um, utility connections into Hatfield Street rather than on Bridge Road. Again, same kind of concept where we want to try to avoid any kind of disruption to Bridge Road we can. And uh, so we're proposing a uh, water line connection onto Hatfield Street that would come in uh, on our shared driveway and service uh, the individual uh, unit. So these would be presumed to be individually owned, so they'd all have their own water connections uh, uh, from uh, this extension from Hatfield Street into our site. Um, similarly, we're going to do that with a sewer. Sewer would come in off of Hatfield Street and service the buildings, if you will, from the back of the buildings as well. And we'll have um, the plan is to construct a new manhole out uh, over the existing sewer and extend a sewer, uh, a line into the site and that would terminate with another uh, manhole as well. Um, again, this was another item where it was felt like, uh, if again, if we could kind of do all the utilities on Hatfield Street and everything, the, the connections and the street disruption and everything else, that would be much more desirable than trying to do it off of Bridge Road. Uh, drainage, um, as far as uh, drainage is concerned for the project, uh, we tried to handle that uh, on site. Uh, there was a desire uh, from the planning department to try to avoid any try to connections, any, any kind of connections to the street storm. And we think we've uh, come up with a successful plan uh, for doing that, in which uh, basically the back of the whole site would is, is designed and graded such that uh, its surface flows into the <coughs> central area of the loop here, of the, the shared driveway loop, into a rain garden, which would be heavily planted, and uh, the water would uh, uh, infiltrate into, into this area here, into this rain garden area here. Uh, we also will be taking uh, roof uh, drains from these two units and connecting them into an infiltration system that would be located in the back of this lot right in here. We felt that that roof water was good and clean water, um, that taking that and bringing that right directly into infiltration system uh, would be a, a pretty good idea uh, to not only um, kind of lighten the load of the rain garden area, but also help to recharge the groundwater uh, <coughs> supply. Uh, um, on this uh, lot. We have excellent soils out there. We've done some soil testing and uh, the soils are Amistown and Hinkley soils and they drain pretty well. Uh, we also have uh, a pretty, a fairly significant depth from uh, ground to groundwater so that we can use, utilize the, the ground for, uh, for our um, stormwater infiltration as well. Landscaping, uh, we, as you can see on the plans, uh, we've included uh, uh, and, uh, street shade trees uh, along Bridge Road, along Hatfield Street, and uh, including uh, like, uh, in, uh, planting trees within our um, looped shared driveway as well. Um, there's landscaping sh indicated on the plans that will be uh, included in the front of all the buildings, the front uh, entryways. Uh, we've included some plantings in between some of the buildings for privacy. And we've also indicated that we'd like to put kind of like a low hedge um, at the corner of Bridge Road and uh, Hatfield Street that would extend around and down along Hatfield Street and come across the island um, we felt that this might just kind of give the, the side yard, this corner lot here, 
a little bit of privacy and everything else uh, for their side yard. Uh, we do show on the plan that we wanted to put a couple of light poles, just a little six foot high wood, uh, wood light poles, uh, just to give uh, a little bit of lighting to this looped driveway in here. And we're, we're thinking about using light fixtures um, that, have, uh, that are LED and that have um, solar storage in them, so that they would be lit by the solar um, that would be uh, stored from uh, sunlight. They make the, these fixtures now that in the top part of the hat, which is solid, so that we can, so that all the light will shine downwards. Um, some uh, s a solar storage uh, for lighting the uh, lights in the, uh, at nighttime. Um, let's see. Um, we also have indicated on the site plan uh, that we would uh, put up a, um, some fencing along this property line here for privacy from this um, from this single-family residence as well. That's shown on the plans. Um, we're extending back from Hatfield Street. Why we can see this on the, you're pointing to things that we can't I, even see. I, I apologize. Uh, yeah. Because we can't get it to work on there, I might have. To, I know I might have to go over the whole thing again. <laughs> yeah, you might, or face us, or you know, make it more of a community. You know, share with us what you're actually talking about. Well, uh, would the planning board mind if I turned it no, a little bit? No, that would so be a good idea because we have a, a, a modified. Oh, we don't have it in front of us. So now that you've changed okay. the plans. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for speaking out yeah. the body and everything else. So I apologize for. Okay. okay. All right, so if, if I can just stop, right, I mean, is there anything that you want me to clarify and point to? Uh, oh, you just said single-family residents, so I don't know which okay. one you're talking about. All right, I'm sorry. So we, we, the property line of our project kind of, kind of comes kind of close to this single-family residence right here. That's where you live? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. We understand that, and what we want to kind of do, and I talked to Larry about it, is we want to put up our privacy fence and, uh, along this whole property line. Um, basically, it would be six foot height to about this point right in here, which we think would maximize the, your, uh, the privacy in your backyard. And then we're just going to kind of drop it down to four feet in here as we extend it out the tap Street. Okay. Um, audience let me uh, tell you how this goes so we get the presentation and we've got a public hearing open right now and we will we do no, I didn't open it yet, did we? Yes. Mm -hmm. and and then uh, we'll ask questions to make sure we understand it and then we'll want to hear from you perhaps on that. and then is so that it doesn't get so that he's talking back and forth to the group then we'll close the public hearing and then we'll finalize our discussions and then then we'll take a vote on whether it passes and during that I'd like for Carolyn to explain um, the zoning and site plan and and what actually has brought you before us so. okay all right um, I guess I, I, I do. <coughs> I think on behalf of Larry, I would just apologize a little bit for the proposal being changed a little bit uh, from the six to the eight. Um, there's a little bit of uh, um, uh, a reality check being set in um, about what we're trying to propose and, and the cost of, of the units. We, we went through a considerable process to design the units that were originally proposed. They were really nice units, um, uh, to say the least. Um, and we even included on an amenity, we, we had a first floor uh, master bedroom suite and everything else. Um, we engaged uh, in some discussions with some uh, people in the know in the market in Northampton, and unfortunately, it, it kind of hit us like with a ton of bricks here that 
uh, these these uh, units were going to be way too expensive uh, to build and to try to sell. So, you know, we came in and we met with the planning department and uh, wanted to see what the possibility of kind of moving forward with the meeting here tonight with an alternative building that is much more compact and um, uh, less costly to build, therefore being a, a lot more affordable and also a lot more, in all honesty, to market as well. Um, so we went from kind of uh, uh, these master bedroom suites being on the first floor to a, a more compact unit, which is a typically more of a townhouse uh, a type of unit where the three bed, you know, you, 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 uh, you have the main living area on the first floor and a walk up to uh, three bedrooms on the second floor. Uh, we still had the, have the amenity of the attached uh, garages, uh, typically in the, in the, uh, in the back of uh, two of the buildings, but on the other two buildings, uh, we have, as I kind of briefly mentioned, freestanding uh, garages. Um, there were two reasons why we uh, did that for the two buildings that you can see to the left. Uh, one was uh, to give us some flexibility for that corner lot uh, up on, uh, on Bridge Road um, to access that, the, the shared driveway. So that was kind of important to us and, and to avoid it going out to Bridge Road. That was a big, yeah. that was a big push on our part to try to do that and to respond to the desires of uh, the review committee. Um, so where's the, uh, on that diagram, where is the? Well, Bill, it's on the screen now. Oh yeah. So that gray sh shaded right. area, that yes. smaller one is the new Correct. one. Okay. Thank yeah. You. yeah. And the other, the other building, this building right here, because we wanted the, the, front, to, the front of the building to be visible from the street, we still felt that was important, even though it was set back considerably. Um, we uh, took we took that uh, the garage and kind of separated it and, and uh, located it, as you see uh, on the site plan. We really needed the area within the the shared driveway loop for our drainage and everything else. So it would be, would have been difficult for us to kind of push it push the building. Uh, forward towards Hatfield Street um, to uh, uh, accommodate uh, a connected uh, garage. Also, it would have uh, entailed a lot more pavement that we, uh, than, than what we had on the site here. So the, um, a couple of things I just want to kind of point out in, in going through this redesign, uh, because the, the buildings are a lot more compact and everything else, we were able to uh, redoubt, uh, these are significantly uh, more compact, so there's uh, less of a presence of a footprint on the site, uh, as well as uh, 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 trimming some of the, uh, the pavement down. We're, th this plan here versus the other plan, we're actually over 2,000 square feet uh, less in impervious coverage than we are on, uh, with the original plan because of the footprint of, basically because of the footprint of the buildings. So that's about 10% decrease in what we had in overall impervious coverage for the site. Um, you know, so that, that was kind of something that, that came out of uh, what we were trying to analyze uh, with this revised uh, design. Uh, not only that, but I think we're going to be able to uh, accommodate a little bit more of the runoff better because we've increased our inside interior loop area a little bit where the rain garden is to better accommodate uh, drainage in that area. We've got some comments back from DPW on it, and you know we're 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 kind of in the ballpark with uh, their recommendations. There are a few little things we need to answer, everything else, admittedly, but. We can kind of get that, um, we, or, or address it um, when we kind of uh, get into a final uh, revisions to the site plan. And that's one thing we're we're hoping that we can kind of get is we can 
move forward with comments that we might get from the audience and the planning board and, and uh, uh, go through and, and revise the plans uh, with the, this duplex style uh, project uh, in mind. Did you say there was less paving? Yes. We have less, yes, we have actually, well, it's less impervious coverage than we had on the on the uh, previous scheme. Because the buildings were so big and everything else, we were able to, uh, the, the, uh, these buildings uh, are, are smaller and more efficient. Um, we were able to s save on uh, the impervious coverage by 2,000 square feet, the whole, given the whole project. I'm just having trouble because on this, depiction the original one yep. versus that one it would appear that there's more paving but maybe I'm not understanding where the lot lines I think it's the house size it's, it's not reduced. Just paving. It's also the house size. So right. the well we did the calculations we were in the calculations and yeah um, that's you know it was I mean it's not a lot but you know it was something that w was you know actually a result of uh, this redesign here Do you want me to go to the um, changes for the, ex the facade elevation sheet? Or, um, um, yeah, so I just let me know which plan you want to go to because I think it's better if I keep it here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we pro I, I, you know, I, I guess it's kind of pointless to even show what we had proposed before because it's... I think it's confusing, actually. Yeah, right. So if have on the screen only current proposal or is that a mix of this and that? Um, well, uh, I, I would say for the sake of confusion, this is the proposal we want to do, what you just saw up there. Okay, okay because the buildings are, are a different com configuration. They're smaller, even though the concept was still there for at least the corner unit and uh, the, the corner unit and then the next unit. But we don't have that. Yeah. Well, we have it just. We, I mean, don't, have we don't have it. We have it on our desk. No. Okay. Right. I, I have some hard copies in here. I don't know if the planning board of, of that plan right there. I have some hard copies in here that I can kind of distribute these out to the planning board. Again, I have to apologize to the plan, planning uh, board for, for this, but it is really kind of critical to us to Thanks. work out the finances for this and, and you know what the impact was going to be from a, a, a financial uh, standpoint was just to the point where we thought we needed to kind of air our, our situation here a little bit. So are you through with you ready for questions? Um, I, I was going to kind of, Carolyn was going to just show the, the building facade which um, you have a picture of it. Um, we, we did. A, we did. We, we gave you a picture of that. Um, it, this is similar to what, kind of, from a massing standpoint, of what we want to do. Yeah, this is kind of typical of townhouse units. Sort of a little bit slender, uh, about 22, 23 feet wide, uh, type of thing. They'll have. Um, we'll have a, a, a covered entryway on it. Um, there'll be some architectural features on the, uh, the building. Everybody can see the, okay. Um, there'll be some architectural features on the front of the building that give us some character. One thing that this uh, shows that we would, we're, would prefer not to do is the brick. We'll go with some clapboard siding. Uh, we think that would be much more cost compatible with the neighborhood. So this is what would face Bridge Road? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, yes, and, and again, you know, part of our overall concept, concept was that you wouldn't actually see the garages from, uh, from Bridge Road or from the main streets because they're in the back of the building serviced by the shared driveway coming off of Hatfield Street. And, and why are the, the two garages detached? Um, well, the one on Bridge Street was detached um, 
so that we can get have a, uh, access and the connectability uh, to the shared driveway. Um, we, 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 it was too tight to kind of have it come in the prototypical way that you see it on that corner, the, the other two corner lots. And also on the other lot, um, we really wanted to kind of have the front facade facing towards this, uh, Hatfield Street as much as possible. And um, so uh, we, 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 we separated the garage so that we could, we could make that possible as well. Who is going to own the driveway and the green garden? Uh, it is going to be um, kind of similar to a, a homeowners association. Uh, where um, all these units will be responsible for maintaining uh, the shared driveway and all uh, and all the amenities on the site. All the amenities on the site. And yes, the on, on the whole project site. Even though we've got four lots, <coughs> four and one of those lots. lots seems to have the rain garden. It looks correct. Like Yes, right, right. Well, and what we're going to have to do, what we, we'll come back to the plan board with uh, a plan with the lot lines on it, the, the, the areas on it, and indicating uh, that the shared driveway and everything else is e e would have an easement on it, okay, so that that allows for access for all the units and also for access for um, the uh, utilities, especially the water. The water department had indicated that they want to have, get access on there if they ever have to kind of, you know, shut the water services off to the buildings. So the old diagrams that we had had building envelopes on them. Those have not changed. Mm -hmm. uh, they did. Yes, they. Yeah, the, the building envelopes, or if you will, the lot lines. We had to modify the lot lines a little bit on that too. So they're slightly different. Okay. Um, if I, I'll, I'll remind the planning board that back in September of last year, um, uh, a plan was signed off by you for uh, the, the four lots in here <coughs> and was uh, subsequently uh, recorded in the Registry of Deeds, um, which indicated the lots. Um, they're roughly in this configuration, but you know, because of the, the buildings and everything else that we had to kind of locate on here and, and get the access to work out to the, the garages, we have, we, we, we have to modify that uh, lot plan. But all the areas will meet the zoning requirements, the setbacks, all the buildings are within the setback requirements. Uh, we meet all the open space requirements, which is a minimum of 40% 40, 40 open space. Uh, on the lots as well. Does there need to be a deed restriction or something for the rain garden area to keep that as a permanent structure on? Yes. So um, whenever there is, so the reason why this is even coming before you for site plan review is because of the shared driveway piece. And the criteria in the zoning is that the shared, uh, that um, before construction can happen, well, it, actually the, the zoning isn't that specific, but um, documents for maintenance and, um, and um, ownership have to be um, recorded before, you know, the project can move forward. It would probably make sense to specify in a condition to say that um, the maintenance agreements and ownership responsibilities for both the common driveway or shared driveway and all the drainage infrastructure. There's another, are you still maintaining the same, the rain, um, infiltration area on that far lot? Yes, on the, okay. yes, and I did, I did mention that, right. And so we still have that, so uh, there's we're still incorporating <coughs> that uh, um, structure as well. Yes. So this area back here is also a common drainage area. So both of those need to be, and I would recommend a condition to that effect. Um, and the other um, uh, um, thing that I think would be important, it wasn't in my staff report to you, but sort of on reflecting 
on it more because of the nature of this um, project. It's it's individual. It will be individual lots. Is that the decision be recorded with each parcel instead of on one parcel with cross references? Uh, many times, um, subsequent homeowners don't pick up on a decision that might be recorded with one parcel. So I would recommend that that become um, a condition as well. And for the purpose of people who are listening to this, give me a quick um, review of this is in URB. Sorry. So what are the, the sort of the zoning allows for certain rules that have already been established for zoning and so I think it's important to hear that in relation to what's being proposed. Right. So the urban residential B district allows for single two and three family units by right however if you reach a certain um, square footage threshold for per unit which is 2,000 square feet that could trigger um, site plan review um, and these are so these would be considered two family units on sep separate lots you need for two family units you need a 5,000 square foot lot area for each parcel and then 40% um, open space which um, Bill Cannon um, noted and the setbacks are 15 feet on the side 20 feet to the rear between the structure and the rear property mm -hmm. lines and then from the front of the structures to the street lot lines is a minimum of 10 feet of setback. So can you give me the square footage for the units and, and the lots? Or do you, have you gotten that drawn up yet? Um, we, the, we, we do not have uh, the area indicated for the lots and we will, we will get that on the revised plans. I think what I'm uh, looking for for the public to realize that it's a 5,000 square foot requirement and at least the lots we were looking at were up around 9,000 square feet, one of them. So I think well, the point I'm trying to make is you're, you're not shoeholing a building in there. You've got plenty of room to put in a building according to zoning. Right. Well, uh, these two lots in here are about I, I, um, the, the corner lots. I don't know which way. Yeah. Uh, now about 7,000 about 7, square feet. And the lot with the gray building is about 5,500 square feet. And the, the, the bigger lot uh, on the bottom, I, I think it's about 16. I think it's okay, it's about 20, 20,000 square feet. Uh, the whole the smallest lot is about 7,000. Yeah, so you know they're uh, they're they're all over. They're not the minimum size, is is what I can kind of purport to you right now, um, and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, they, you know, again, they meet all the other requirements too here. Yeah, so this is not a special permit hearing where something that is outside of the zoning requirements is happening. Rather, you're before us because you're asking for a shared driveway, which layers on some rules and requirements that need to go with the deed of those properties so that it stays with them as they change hands in the future. Yeah. So that's really our more our purpose here. We, we certainly um, care about what you're doing and I, I, I you know want it to be uh, advantageous for uh, for good residential property so but I, I, I'm just trying to make the point that this is not an exception to the zoning it's rather within the zoning that we've established long before this meeting and that what we're here to really talk about is um, the, the the assurance that it's within that and, uh, and the conditions that apply to a shared driveway. Yeah. I can, if I can just add to that, I, again, as I, as I mentioned before, I, I don't know if you lost sight of that or not, but we approached um, the uh, city in what, what they call a round table or tech meeting, where we had all the departments kind of come in and look at the site plan, look at our concept, make suggestions, uh, you know, bring up issues that we need to kind of address when we when we submit the final plans to the planning board, um, and uh, it was it was strongly felt that this kind of shared highway concept uh, would be helpful um, uh, to come off of Hatfield Street rather than having individual driveways coming off of Bridge Road to the buildings and kind of mucking up the, the traffic flow on, on Bridge Road. That was, that was a big deal. 
And uh, since we were kind of entering into that kind of a concept, uh, we followed through with that with uh, the service, the utilities, the, the, the uh, sewer and the water as well, to come off of Hatfield Street and service uh, the buildings uh, from the rear, if you will, uh, of the building, rather than going through you know, individual street cuts and everything else on British Road for each building. So, DPW comments? Um, yep, I can uh, run through those. Oops. I know we've, we've had projects in, in this neighborhood before that have had a great deal of concern about groundwater runoff. And I think the soil testing and the rain garden and the infiltration, um, and, and I'm interested in the DPW's opinion on whether you have any uh, any runoff at all after, in other words, are you containing all your water within the lot lines? And I think that's where this board goes to the specialist at the DPW to do those number crunching exercises and tell us that. So they did, um, DPW did issue a stormwater permit this afternoon for the project and there were associated conditions relative to that. Um, the other issues on the um, engineering side that's um, related to water and sewer um, are that they want the DPW um, noted that if they're going to be condominium individually owned units then the water service um, connections um, shall have there should be a meter um, one water service and meter per lot um, I believe they're saying so um, uh, per unit if yeah, they said yeah. they typically are per unit, but they said duplex lot here. But at any rate, there's a standard city requirement with how you do the water line. So um, yeah, I spoke to Dave okay. on the phone about that. And, okay, and he was quite clear. If these are individually owned, you know, like in the duplex, they're individually yep. owned, and they need their own separate water service, and then they'll have their own water meter, and then that can be, you know, they they radio by read the water meters and everything else the only thing that he was if i can uh what was uh curious about was uh accessibility to the shutoff right so they want an easement yeah. to allow the city right. to so come that in. easement you know not only for the for the, the residents to have access to their garages but would allow the city uh, to enter into the shared driveway so that they can get at the shutoffs to shut shut the water off if there happened to be a problem in the unit. Right. So there there were um, uh, requirements about the connections for that, and then in terms of the sewer, same thing. They want specific um, attachments and connections for cleanouts and things like that. So they were they detailed those um, for the landscaping. Um, the a row uh, there's a row of um, dwarf inkberry along the corner between Hatfield that wraps around Hatfield and bridge that corner is planted for three feet um, as a three foot tall shrub they do grow taller so um, there were two comments and I would recommend as a condition as well that they be maintained um, no taller than three feet so they're pruned back that's in the zoning actually you can't have fencing or landscaping that's taller than three feet when you're that close to the property line right. um, but that could be a condition so that it goes with it runs with the lots so just just for a clarification on that um, it's um, at up, up at the see, see the, the curve element that's up at the intersection of bridge and Hatfield Street um, <clears throat> there there is a green strip uh, from our property line to the back edge of the sidewalk on Bridge Road. And I did show the hedgerow kind of going up right next to the sidewalk. Uh, well, they prefer to have, keep it, push it back and keep it on our land. Yeah, yes. I think that's for, that's for sight lines at the intersection. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for the detail sheets, the DPW is asking that the type two bituminous concrete uh, concrete curb is the is city standard and shall be used in lieu of type three curb, which is proposed in the city layout. Right. Um, yeah, that's to match what's out there right now, Caroline. Right. The, the 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 type that we showed 
kind of inadvertently uh, uh, showed it, um, and we we'll just bring in the curve that will match okay. what's out there. And then no, no wait, it, we want we don't want the curve to match what's out there. We want it to match what the city requirements are. That, yeah, that's what that's what he's requiring us to be. He's right, requiring that's us to be said. type three. And it's type three is what the requirement is. Um, you have type three, the type two it says is the city standard. Right, right. Yeah. So we'll we'll match it we'll 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 bring we'll revise that right. to the type two, which Got will it. match what's out there now on Ampel Street. Okay. And then there's details about the cover for um, utility trench. Um, so you can do a um, sort of a general condition right. about meeting the city standards for utility connections and trenches. Say anything about the, the sewer. Um, and I'll email these to you. Yeah. Um, the sewer services crosses an existing drain line. The right. exact elevation is not known, so you have to put in um, an exterior chimney drop. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that um, right, um, and and all that is is a, 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 a drop in the pipe that brings it down to the shelf. Right. That, that's all. That's yeah. all that is. We, because the drain manholes out on Hatfield Street are paved over, we couldn't get into the manholes to elevate the pipes to figure out what the exact depth is. We have kind of a, uh, a, an I a close idea uh, on that, but we won't be able to ascertain the exact elevation of that until we start building the manhole, and then we'll work with DPW to, to see where that is. But we know we're gonna, we're gonna have to jump the, the uh, drain line that we're gonna be crossing at what elevation, I don't know what, what that, exactly what that's gonna be yet. But. Carolyn. First in the storm water. I'm just not sure I'm understanding. It's going to be a homeowners association, but it's four different lots. Uh, I'm just right. I'm not so because it's drainage is coming is being handled by all four lots in sort of a common area. It's similar to a shared driveway where everyone's going to be responsible for maintaining it and meeting the standards that were stip are stipulated in the maintenance for the system. So my recommendation would be just to record the decisions with each parcel separately, as opposed to having it only recorded once. Mm -hmm. And that way it carries forward with every single deed when the subsequent property owners purchase. So does that mean there's, in effect, four small homeowners association? No, they all, they all are going to have the same, there's going to be one common sort of maintenance agreement. <coughs> It'll just be recorded. It'll just okay, be. That's what it was just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The same that one. Be eight. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. All right. Um, tell me more about the lights on the driveway. Um, do we have. I don't have light line. Detail sheet? Mm -hmm. There's no detail sheet. In the, in the original. I don't yeah, think there's the a lighting plan. Oh, the original. Yeah. It's in the back. Uh, it's right here. So, <laughs> uh, I brought it up, but um, it's it, it's it's um, very low profile fixture. Only just a six foot high type of wood pole with the lantern type of fixture on it. It would be uh, an LED type of uh, fixture. Um, which, you know, very efficiently ha has a very efficient wattage to it and everything else mm. um, that would be powered by a solar element right. that would be built into the hood of the lantern. Um, but we thought, we, you know, a couple of little residential uh, scale light fixtures around that loop there might, be, might help out. So for the audience, these look like what I would have at the end of my sidewalk at the house. But what I want to make sure of is that these people can't see the light source, that the light is intended to go down, but yes. you won't see the light element in there. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, so they have a, a, a solid hood on the top. And there's a that, that, will, that, that forces the light down instead of just kind of like a big global type of thing. You can see into it, but the light source is up in the hat, so you don't. It does, it's not in your eye, you eyesight. See the light, but not the source. Any other questions? Where's the trash? Trash is handled by each individual. Yes. Unit? Yeah. Yeah. Common dumpster. They'll, 
typically, you know, they'll bring out a bin or something, and you know, it'll be serviced by somebody who will come in, in the, on the shared driveway, pick up bins, empty them out, and then they'll, similar to a, a single family residence, bring them back and store them in the garage type of thing. We, 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 we weren't interested in having dumpster enclosures. <laughs> Carolyn, if there was not the shared driveway, would there be room on all the lots to have the driveways go out? Like, through, I guess three would go to Bridge Road and one would yep. go to that. There would be. They have well, the there would be room and they would have the right to ask Good. DPW for a curb cut, cut for each one of those lots to have okay. their own individual driveways. Okay. And utility services. Right. Is there any thought to snow storage? Um, well, uh, it's my feeling that we do have uh, sufficient area, especially on the outside of the shared Conway, uh, 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 on the outside of the of the shared driveway loop for snow storage, except for where the driveways come out from the garages, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that would have to be, you know, cleared to the side. Um, there'll be some room on the shoulder and the inside of the loop for some storage and everything else, but they can't. We we can't. Um, the the rain garden will be off limits in terms of you know storing any kind of uh, snow in, in that area for obvious reasons and everything else. But um, I think there's plenty of room. My my feeling is there's plenty of room in since the outside of the loop for snow storage. Since that ill infiltration area in the back is a shared ownership area right. could you put it there um, there is room there if, if we needed uh, uh, some place to, to kind of you know <clears throat> an extra place to, to put some snow but I, I really don't think it's going to be necessary but it, that yes we could from my point of view the shared driveway is advantageous because it's two curb cuts instead of four curb cuts. Um, well, four curb, curb cuts could be, well, I don't know how we would, you know, in, in, in terms of a duplex situation. Oh. I, I, you know. You'd only be allowed one. Okay. Right. Plus they're off of Hatfield Street, not Bridge Road, which is right. the biggest advantage. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Move. Do you want to open no. it up? Oh, public hearing. Oh, do we have to? I'm going to leave the public hearing open oh. while we do. Can I hear a move to open it up to public hearing? So moved. Second. Oh, thank you. Um, sorry, it's taken us in nearly an hour, but um, anyone who wants to comment on the project, just come up and state your name and, uh, and your address, and we'll get that on the record and um, hear what you have to say about it. Good evening. My name is Goose Berkowitz Goslin. I live at 705 Bridge Road, which abuts the little tiny piece back in the corner. Just for your frame of reference. Thank you. Um, I, I realize that the four lots have been approved, and you know I'm not here to be obstinate. I just have a whole bunch of little questions that I think would be more of a peace of mind situation. Uh -huh. That if I could even just focus it to the architect and the builder. If, if that's okay, or do I focus it to you? Um, e e to us, but he's listening. He's okay. going to answer them. That's good. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the sight lines of the uh, corner there with the hedge. I did not know that specific um, uh, uh, requirement of keeping it at three feet. Um, I'm also glad that you guys covered the, the snow. Um, the issue that I, a quick question is who polices it? So for instance, I understand that these are gonna be basically eight separate owners. Which one of them is going to be the one who says, oh yes, it's my turn to cut the hedges because we are all owning it. If there is not actually a formal <coughs> association that says, oh, we have to do it at the end of every month, or oh, we have to remove the snow, how do we know that the snow 
uh, the hedges are being cut and the snow is properly not being put in the drainage area. Right. So okay. that's my first question. Got it. Do you, would you mind going through them and we'll get them why all? Is, why they well, that would cover individual? two or three yeah. of them. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, do you want to give them the building inspector answer? Sure. Well, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, um, in terms of the hedges, it won't necessarily be the entire association that's re responsible. I <coughs> think that it would just be on that lot because the, that's sure. where the site distance is. Um, just like anybody in <laughs> the... Um, no, they're going to make it common. Uh, well, okay, well, that's so, fine. Yeah. Um, but what, regardless whether it's common or individually owned, um, the requirement is of everybody in the city of Northampton. Nobody can maintain any landscaping above three feet when it's at the property edge. So, um, if there's a problem um, anywhere in the city, here or anywhere else, um, the enforcement mechanism is through city department. So you call the building department. Um, for notice of violation. In this case, it might be a little bit easier to police because there's an actual permit um, and there was discussion about it, whereas if it were anybody else who happened to move into a property anywhere and they're not maintaining their hedges, sometimes it's a little bit uh, more difficult to, to follow up on. Um, in terms of the snow um, removal, there's a, there, uh, in their maintenance requirements, they're going to have to show that the the uh, rain garden is being maintained according to design and that it's functioning that way so they have to submit annual um, reports to the city indicating what they've done to maintain that that's not to say that snow won't get plowed um, occasionally onto the edges of that um, I think that um, I I would guess that that might happen on occasion my concern um, with this sort of common access and uh, is, is the, the, the lack of understanding of ownership. Um, we already have to deal with the um, rehab place that's right across the street from there. And this year, thank goodness, it was a mild winter. But last year, um, my mother-in-law, who cares for our son, frequently had to walk through an unplowed sidewalk numerous times in which we continued to call the police department. Nothing got done until, honestly, I emailed Jesse Adams and Bill Dwight. And then suddenly, magically, later on that day, it was completely cleared and for the rest of this, the season. So what I'm hearing is that I need to police them. I need to make sure that I'm the one who's reporting them if they're piling up all the snow in the drainage and then causing it icing over, causing a flood and sliding down the driveway or into Hatfield. I mean, they might just be not thinking about it. And I'm not saying that they're trying to do it on purpose, but if they're not thinking about it, then I as a, a citizen who sees something that's going wrong needs to actually say, all right, I need to call. So you're talking about this um, clearing the sidewalks on the perimeter? I'm the talking street? about any aspect of this being a shared responsibility mm -hmm. and what I heard from you was it's the law you know it's the city regulations and anyone can report it if they are not doing any if they're not doing their responsibility of maintaining the grounds which is the hedges the snow removal the proper storage of snow if we get hit like what three years ago we got hammered and we had snow four feet in the air and you know, at some point, they're going to start pushing it into the drainage. And because I wouldn't blame them, except for it's going to ice over. And if the slope is down Hatfield and that drainage goes on, you're going to get an ice slick onto Hatfield and into the neighboring property next door. So one other thing to think about, though, is that these eight people become their own neighbors. And so I think you can think about it. It's not like they as the eight. I mean, I realize they're new and they're coming in. No, I understand. But they're going to have the first, the first interest in negotiating with each other to not abuse I them. I hope so. Yeah. But with the, you know, there's no transition period. They could sell lot one, five, and three in the first three months and then not sell the next couple of lots for a few more months. 
Right. And then that's where you get the misunderstandings. I'm not saying anybody's trying to be malicious here. I'm just saying that I see this happening. And unless the, you know, the, it would be pleasant to hear that the seller is willing to stay on for uh, X amount of months after sale or until all of them are sold just to help them understand what the heck they're getting themselves into. Um, I don't know if that's normal. I'm, I, I know that's costly and whatnot, but I, I, I worry about the maintenance when you start talking about the shared aspect. So I just want that on the record. Got it. Um, the next thing is, <clears throat> I live on Bridge Road, and we are, if I did my math correctly, f uh, a grand total of 49 feet and two and a half inches from that road, from literally, not the sidewalk, the road. And every morning at 5 a.m., there is a logging truck that goes by with the air brakes. And it is a fantastic amount of noise, and what I would turn to the, the builders uh, and the owner is that if you're putting your houses 21 feet away, which is what the last plan was, I don't know if it's changed now that the footprints are smaller. I, I was actually it was happy. Of 10 feet or something. It was 10, it 10, right, you have a minimum of 10 feet. I understand it's all within code. I understand that and I'm not trying to stop that, but I worry about the sale of the property. And so if we have these nice looking duplexes there not selling because of the noise issue we we have nails in our walls popping out because of you know semi trucks going by rattling our entire house and we are at least double the distance away from that road yeah. so that is a concern about property value if you build these wonderful things and they don't sell what does that do to our property value um, that that's a another concern. Um, I don't know if they have a, any suggestions about how to mitigate that or not. Um, another thought that I had um, along those lines is the power lines for Bridge Road are on that side, so the second floor bedrooms are going to be, if I'm doing my math right, based upon the old. Plan 13, uh, is it, no, it's about 15 feet away looking at power lines right at the second floor. Again, this, the ability to sell it is a concern um, with that situation. Um, the other concern that I have as a citizen is Hatfield is the number one way that ambulances get to Cooley Dickinson Hospital. When you're doing all this construction, I know they'll find another way to do it, but you're adding on at least eight more automobiles at that corner. So I, I know you're saying you don't want to do it to Bridge Road. That'd be four separate, three driveways, then one. But the ambulances turn before they get to Bridge Road. And we hear them and see them go zinging up all the time. That is the number one route that they take. So during the construction phase, I hope that they're told what's going on. I would certainly would not want to be in an ambulance and have to deal with that. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'll get one. I'll get this one. I guess the last question that I have um, is. As for that little piece in the corner, we hear that it's a, um, I think you're referring to it as a fil infiltration. infiltration system. And so there's, there's nothing planned going there, but that's where the water can end up going. So I assume it's being sloped down there. Yep. So then my question becomes, if it, you're sloping it during warm days and cold nights during the winter, we have had an ice puddle form on our backyard. As that continues, that puddle is going to get larger and larger because our lawn slopes that way as well. Um, I don't know if there's any way to mitigate that. I don't know if that means that there's going to be an actual drain into the ground to mitigate that or if it's just kind of 
open land, but it's another thought that that can happen in that area, which is a okay. concern. So there are my thoughts. I don't know if the board has any comments to them. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. I'd, I'd like to work through everyone who wants to say something, and then we'll 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 have the discussion with the builder. I, I don't know if this would be improper to ask for or not, but being that we're the three neighbors mostly affected by this project, it might be nice to get the new updated plan for us to look at over time to get more on board with the project. I know that yeah, I, we I can't stop it. I typically hand mine off to people who have an interest, so I would be doing that. I I what I just gave you. I think that's that a great idea. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you for your time. Sure. And if you need another one, we can take some of ours and hand back to you. Other comments? <clears throat> yes, um, my name is Rashad Ukda, and we live on 64 Hatfield Street. It's uh, the, the single family residence on the side. And uh, I had a question pertaining to the um, common driveway and the light. You said the light would shine down, but how tall would that light fixture be? And where would it be positioned at in accordance to our house? Because our bedroom is now on the side where the fence will come up the side. Right. So we're kind of worried about how that common driveway affects our the um, we have located three of these poles on the inside if I could speak to that yes uh, on the inside of the loop so that they're as far away from your from this this is where you live right yes there. they're they're pretty far away uh, plus we have the fence here as, we, as I briefly described but the poles are only my height okay see so yeah uh, um, strictly just kind of like low-key residential little light poles that you find along a front sidewalk type of thing. That's all they are. They're not high light poles, you know, they're going to be casting light all over the place. So that, that's kind of like the character of the pole. It's a wood pole, and again, it's only six feet high. Not seven feet. Well, yeah, plus or minus, yeah, seven feet there. But it trains down there. Right. I'm, I'm just worried about it because our bedroom, like if I'm laying in my bed, I just. You're going to first pull up here at a six foot fence right there. I thought it was going to be four feet on the side of the house, or is it going to be. Well, it'll be six feet to this point right in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the bedroom is, is kind of. The, the bedroom's right in here? Would be right here, yeah. 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 Wow. So is there a pole? Is there going to be a pole like right here? like? Or is it we've be got on the other side. We've got one here, one here, and we've got one over there. So we've got one on this edge over here. Well. And, the, and the greenway kind of. So that to in, inside here? Yes. Right. Right. If it were a problem, it would get straightened out. And uh, and then uh, another question as well is about we're now being six units and six cars now coming into the common driveway. I was just wondering what about like visitor parking. In the in the common driveway, if they had like visitors over. Well, um, uh, what we've shown on here is is a is a is a, a wide out area on either side of the driveway, um, six feet wide. Um, you can see it uh, that would allow for visitors to parallel park uh, along the driveway uh, for some overflow if if they were needed. A place for somebody to park. So if you got six in the 15 foot wide driveway, that's uh, that's 21 feet. Okay, so it certainly is wide enough to have uh, to to um, allow for somebody to use the driveway and somebody to parallel park over there. So we've got sufficient room for uh, three cars on one side and two cars on another side uh, to guest park. Uh, for the use uh, uh, of the uh, individual residences. And there would be three on on which side? On top over here. Okay. 
And so and for it allowed for two on this side, on the on the lower, on the southerly side. Yeah, and so for context, residential roads are often 20 feet wide, which sometimes 22 feet wide. So it's going to feel like a two-lane width. Um, you've also, I'm oh. sorry, you've also got. Uh, You've got garages, but you're showing cars not pulling into their garage. So that you've got some parking capability there where people can put their car in the garage if a visitor is coming. You s with me? Uh, I see what Correct. you're saying. Yeah, yeah so, so the driveway um, it, it provides access to the garage. If, there's, if, if the uh, owner is a one car owner, then they can park in the garage. Yeah, yeah, certainly the room in the driveway for somebody to park in there as well. And the air in the back, the irrigation drainage, what is, what is that thing in the back? The groundwater would just collect into the... Yes, what, um, what I spoke about was um, we are gonna construct in, in this area right in here, kind of an underground uh, 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 infiltration system. So you it's, it's underground. Well, yes. we're, we're, yeah, we're going to dig. It, it, it's something that you wouldn't see above ground. It's below ground. Uh, they're called Storm Tech. Uh, they're manufactured by Storm Tech. They're they're kind of like half round sections uh, that you kind of stack together and you put on stone. And inside the half round is open for water storage. And then that water storage will be stored there until it infiltrates into the ground. What I want to do is I want to use that kind of a structure here to collect the, the roof uh, runoff from this unit, this unit, this, this garage, and this garage right here, and bring it into that underground uh, infiltration system. Because it's clean water, and so we can take advantage of it just kind of directly infiltrating it. And that will also help um, kind of take a little bit of burden off of uh, everything, everything draining into uh, the rain garden. But it's all under, underground, you won't see it at all. But what does that mean about um, that water, about where, where does the water go? Because right here, kind of the, the grade goes down right. when it comes down to like our property. And right. That water then now is being stored there. What stops it from running downhill? Well, it, it'll be underground. That water is stored underground, four feet deep. So it gets stored underground and then infiltrates into the soil. So it's not a surface runoff. Uh, so what we're going to we're going to take the the roof uh, runoff from the down that's going to be collected into the gutters, brought down to the downspouts, and brought and collected into roof drains underground, piped underground to this infiltration system. So that's all underground. It won't be dumping onto the surface um, uh, grade. And um, I guess that's another general question is, um, when they do the, the trash pickup, the, so the dump trucks will be coming into the shared driveway Correct. and picking up from each and collecting and going back out. Correct. Yeah, that was one, th um, I didn't really mention it, but uh, something that else that coming out of the tech meeting was kind of to have a one-way circulation for this loop. And so everybody would, this would be the entry um, driveway, kind of circle around and exit out this driveway here. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Other comments? Sure. Hi, uh, Goose Park, Wisconsin again. Um, I was just thinking about the trash pickup thought, and it, it appears, it occurs to me that you could actually have eight different companies coming to and through. Um, is there any way you can put into the line items that there will only be one that they can all decide upon so that it mitigates the sound and collection issue? Because that would probably help all of us that live right next door because having eight different trucks go through. I mean, we personally use pedal people, not a problem. It's great. Yep. Um, but to have eight different trucks go through is a little overkill. I don't, I'm not going to answer for yeah, them, them but I'll, not. yeah, I, I, uh, I think it's like me telling you who you have to buy a service from, but, right. um, but I think you got, you got your point across. It got heard. Yes. 
name is Deb Tataro, and I own the property at 711 Bridge Road, which is right abutting to the project. Uh -huh. My son currently lives there with his family. Um, just looking at the plans with the new, two new duplexes that were put in as opposed to the single family, the, both of the garages that are drawn in look a lot closer to the property lines than is that just kind of like a mis, misdrawing or can they be that close to the property line? Um, it's an accessory structure, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, they can be within four or five feet of the property line. Okay. They, because uh, the setbacks that we were talking about were specifically for the inhabited houses. Okay. And um, my other question was in the back near the infiltration system. Right now, there are currently three old trees there. Are those going to remain there, or is those drawings for new trees? The, the, those are, that's roughly where those trees are. They're kind of on the outside yeah. edge a little bit. Yeah. The infiltration system would be right in the center. See where the dotted mm -hmm. line goes around? Yeah. It would be right in that, in the, within that dotted line area, so we'll be, we'll be far enough back from the trees. We may hit a roof, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be. But all the trees that are there, they're going to remain there? We intend on uh, cleaning them up a little bit, however, I, I should Good. say. A lot of them are. They're very messy. Well, a lot of them, they're catalpas, yep. and uh, they have shed a lot of branches, and there's some yep. store in there. I, I think well, it just looks a, like it's split, too. Yeah, so. Mr. Audet has every intention of okay. really cleaning them up and everything else, and if there's something that can be done mutually, if it's mutually agreed upon by the uh, butters, uh, he's certainly willing yeah. to kind of uh, discuss that as well. Because I know over the years, like when my parents first moved in there, the trees were upright, and now they're leaning more and more over our backyard, and we're getting all those catalpa seeds or whatever, and all the rotten apples that are in the yard. And I mean, it's really messy. And now I've got a young granddaughter living there, and. I hate to have her out there with all that stuff, all that debris, but those were just my two questions. Thank you. Thank you. Just have one last comment. To yes. My name is Natalie Cremona, I'm 64, as well. Yeah. And just everyone keeps talking about how busy Bridge Road is, and Hatfield Street is just as busy as Bridge Road. That is not only the main entrance or used way um, for the ambulances, but it's also one of the main shortcut ways from the highways from Northampton to Florence. Florence. So that's just something I wanted to make aware and also comment on as well, that it's concerning as, as well. Thank you. Okay, do I hear a move? Bill, close public comment test seconded so now we discuss it and we thank you for your input I'm sorry it's taken so long to work through it. Um, questions what is it now that we have laid out this happened yes um, well I actually wanted to comment it looks like um, and I guess I should, probably should have done this earlier but I thought public comment is important there it looks like they've included um, sidewalk on the Hatfield Street, but just for a segment of the parcel. Um, so that should continue at least through um, that next, the um, median strip. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it does need to straddle the city property uh, or private property, then um, you all would probably want to put a condition in there that there's an easement granted for the public to walk on the sidewalk that's, you know, on the private property side. <coughs> there's, a, there's a bit of an issue. Mm, well, public comment is closed. Yeah, no, where, where, we'll, we'll wait and we ask you. Where are you saying the private property side? Well, um, there's the, it's not clear what the dimension is between the Hatfield Street um, property line and the, it, the oh. division between the property line and the private right property. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if it's, you know, three feet, let's say, 
So and so two feet of the five foot sidewalk, sidewalk has to be on private property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there should be. Also. Then we need a mm -hmm. public, uh, and, you know, an easement mm -hmm. back Absolutely. for the public to use the sidewalk. Is, does the sidewalk continue down there, or is this just a, a situation where there's a new project so we can put in sidewalks where right. there aren't? It's the new project, uh, and, and yeah. we required it on every street frontage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I got some of my questions answered. I had, I had uh, the sight line problem. I'm happy about pulling back the hedge. That's the right thing to do. Um, I think there are a lot of homeowners in town that don't know the three-foot property line edge requirement, but I think in some ways it's more likely that this group will, since it's a new requirement, they'll be reading about buying theirs. And I think, you know, I, I share your frustration about calling about bad sidewalks in the winter, really I do. Um, but I don't see, at least we're getting sidewalks. That's my blessing, is we just keep chipping away at it, and so at least we're getting sidewalks. And I think that the building inspector is by there often enough for all sorts of reasons that if that hedge is really out of control, I think we would, we would get on it. Um, I pretty much have a list of conditions. I hope the builder heard about the bedroom and the six foot wall and it seems such an obvious thing to transition to the lower wall after you've gone past that, that adjacent neighbor. Um, it, you're right close, I, I don't have the exact transition point, but I think that's just such a careful, it, that, that's just something that should be done, yeah. Um, I'm happy you explained the, il, il, the infiltration. I don't, you know, I, you, we had drawings of it. Uh, <laughs> it basically just slows down the water, is basically, it's desired to sort of catch the fast water and turn it into slow underground water. Um, I was happy to hear that. Um, any other comments from the other board members? Okay, I'm happy to work myself through the list of conditions and Carolyn can note them and then I'll take a, a proposal that just refers to them. Um, so. First and foremost, they'll comply with the DPW conditions. Um, that uh, they'll comply with the sidewalk uh, requirement. Um, that the shared uh, driveway um, will have ownership and maintenance documents uh, filed, uh, recorded. So prior to issuance of building permit. Prior to issuance of building permit. Thank you. Um, that um, that will include the shared ownership of the driveway rain garden and the infiltration area. Um, that there'll be a type two requirement on the curve. That's a DPW. Still. Yeah, that's part of the DPW yeah. conditions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not conditioning the, the fence transition. I just think um, it, it is certainly something that a good new neighbor would do. Um, I like the idea of, of cleaning up the trees because it's good for, the urine, for your infiltration area. Um, it's gonna be tight putting four foot infiltration trench in there without injuring those trees. So it seems like to me if those trees don't make it you'll still be around to put in another smaller tree to replace it and let those start a second life, so to speak. Um, Do you want to put that as a condition that if those have to be removed that uh, well, my placement trees? Yeah, my, my thing to think about them is they're not going to, it may not be an immediate thing. I mean, you who've had building experience know it's something that happens. Could be five years yeah, out. Right. But I don't see these units all going through. So I think at least we'll have a season of seeing how those trees are doing. And I think, um, the new tree ordinance that the city's considering would ask that you do that anyway. So um, just to put in new plantings if you can't save those old plantings. So they're probably not big enough to trigger um, compliance with the new ordinance. So, um, you know, if you felt that, um, you know, you want to set a timeline for replacement or not, I mean, it's up to you all. You don't, if. Um, well. 
since the, I mean, since they're on the site plan, I mean, isn't it required that then, even if they, at any time, they would have to be replaced? Um, they are showing plantings there. They're not really called out. So I would say that it's safer to put in a condition that if the trees, that the trees on the edge of the property, on that edge, um, are removed for construction or die, you know, um, they should be replaced. Or damaged during construction. Right, damaged during construction, yep. Well, why would that be a prescriptive part of or, I mean, if it's not required, why are we going to require that? Well, it's up to you all to decide if you think that it's that's a That's why I, I wanted to bring that to the group, because um, I don't, I'm not sure that that's... Your point being that since we're here to discuss the shared driveway, that maybe is something that we're sort of airing into our thinking when we're doing site, pl when we're doing special permit. Yes. I see your point. We, we would have no... Uh, in a, in a normal site plan, we would have no purview over plantings if they didn't affect any of the rules of the lot. Um, well, I would argue you do. Once you're in site plan, you're looking at the whole picture. Right. And every piece, and what you there's certain approval criteria. So it's not necessarily that it's not, I mean, you may not feel that that's critical to the overall site plan, which is, which is fine, that it's not, that there wasn't a lot of discussion about what kind of value those trees are and if it seems like they're actually sort of in poor condition and not really providing um, a tremendous value then maybe getting them out of there is actually the improvement as opposed to having something else and you know that that would be under your purview as well um, but if there was an aspect of wanting there to be an additional sort of landscape um, relief or something on that edge, then that's, you know, that is in your purview as well. I, I mean, I understand what, I think I understand what Dan is saying, but I guess where I'm coming from is there's trees there now. This is before. After, there should still be trees there. I mean, whether, if they're, noted they're, whether on they're the new, plan. they're old, whatever. Right. They're, you, know, they, you know, there were plantings there that were part of the site. And I guess that, you know, so I'm thinking is, yeah, that's perfectly within our, you know, this is what they're showing. It should look like that, whether they're new or old, but it should look something like that right. when they're done. I mean, I guess that's where, you know. Thoughts? I mean, I understand what you're saying. I would agree with that. Yeah. But if they die, having a condition that they have to be replaced, I'm not, I don't know. It's a question of if they die, when. Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they could be on their way out now. Right. Yeah, yeah I think they are. But, but Carolyn, wouldn't it be? Because I mean, there's a couple others. Wouldn't it be that if they were noted as actually being planted, then they would be responsible for them? If you know they died in a year, they would have to replace. Exactly. Them. That's right. Okay. I guess that's where I, I'm thinking. Like, well, what's you know, what, they shouldn't be worse off because they're there already. Right. I think the issue is if they're noted on the plan as part of the overall landscape right. plan then something should be there because it's highlighted as part of the landscape plan. Right. I guess that's uh, right. So. Well I guess I have a bigger problem with uh, the notion that they're in really poor shape and they're a nuisance to the neighbors <laughs> and so if they're in really poor shape and a nuisance to the neighbors you know I'd rather see a condition that <laughs> they come out. <laughs> well, it would be easier to do the infiltration field if they're out, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, public hearing is closed. I mean, can we still speak to the... You know, yeah. but you can make your best judgment <laughs> about... Well, I mean, you all can decide, yeah. you know, without... And, and if that's... I mean, if they're truly, you know, leaning over and they're dropping a lot of undesirable debris uh, on someone else's property, it seems like the developer, in in a good faith gesture, would take them out and replace them. I don't even know if I care about replacement. I think I care more about taking out nuisance trees. Any thoughts on that? I don't have any thoughts on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to make something up. I, I have a strong opinion. Well, I, I mean, what I hear you saying is that the neighbor is better off by getting that that 
problem taken care of by the developer. My thought is the developer is going to be doing so much digging back in that area to put in the infiltration field that they're probably be happy to do that. Um, I'd like to say it'd be really nice to go further and put in some trees because there were trees there under John's theory that there were trees there. They're old trees, they're nuisance trees, but we have trees and it's right against the neighbors and it'd be really nice just as you've done around the perimeter of the rest of it to add in a couple of trees. Um, so I think there's not a size requirement under this condition. You know, there's just, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking it's not a condition, it's a discussion that we've had and, right, and exactly. that's, the, yeah. that's the situation. Yeah. So no condition about the tree. I no condition about the tree. Though, so, <laughs> just one last chance, you know, speak up for the trees. Um, not having to worry about keeping the trees would make it easier for the developer if they didn't have, if they just said, you know, if they don't have to worry about, because I mean, there is an effort to protecting them and doing all that. Yeah, they would have to really do some. So, I mean, it, does, it could add, you know, it could ease the burden of doing the infiltration by saying, well, we don't have to worry about these trees. We'll do this, we'll be more efficient. We'll put four trees in and then, you know, they'll, in 20 years, they'll look <laughs> as big as these. And, right. so. so maybe the condition is to either protect the trees that are there or, or pull them out and replace them with appropriate replacement trees. Yeah, with one of the four other. trees. Right. Yeah. I guess. But we don't want them digging and make having those trees die is kind of what Yeah, right. Yep. And um so can I get a nod of whether that seems like a reasonable thing to ask for four new trees? Take those trees out and get four new trees. And that we're talking smaller planting trees at that point. Yeah. Okay. It's either or I thought. Yeah. Right? E either protect them if they want to right. or, replace them. or replace them. Okay, any other conditions belong on this? What about the new property lines? <clears throat> well, you'll see the ANR. They'll have to come in with a revised ANR okay. right. um, with the property lines, and I'll have to show that they're meeting the open space requirements and setbacks. Um, the only other thing I would add is just um, for the sidewalk construction to continue um, and then that, that an easement be given to the city that allows the public to pass on that sidewalk if it's on, if it has to spread all time. Okay, yeah, I had mentioned sidewalks and I, I thought that got it. But, oh, I'm sorry, maybe but, did. Yeah, and that, but I did not cover the easement. And you mentioned the fence, but you don't feel like we can be prescriptive about We've suggested what might happen, but we can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do. So moved. Second. Comment? I, I, yeah, it's okay. No, I just had a question, just kind of out of curiosity. Carolyn, do you know um, how the construction will be staged? I mean, are they going in and building all the, the buildings at once? Does the infiltration in the roadway go in? Uh, like, what is the sequencing? <clears throat> well, um, I don't know about, you know, which lots will go first, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, the sh they'll have to, I can look at the stormwater permit, actually, but the, you know, once there's, um, impervious surface they're gonna to have to be handling the drainage on site so they might be doing phasing so that they're still they still need to capture that even during construction mm -hmm. um, they're not going to complete the rain garden until you know after probably a significant portion of the projects right until they've got um, enough right. impervious stuff. well and also so they don't damage the plantings mm -hmm. um, but I don't know mm -hmm. um, the order of things but and I'm and I think that could shift too without much problem. You know, if they think they're going to build one house first and then they shift to another one, that should be okay. And during construction, I mean, is the size of the project enough to um, warrant a SWIP? Or it's over you, an acre. Would you go on each individual lot? Well, they already have a stormwater permit for the whole thing, and it's a common land plan mm -hmm. of land for mm -hmm. development. Okay. Um, so they've got the stormwater permit, and they have to abide by that. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, just as F FYI, uh, we have filed a SWIP. Okay. Because we we took it 
uh, that the, the lot, the whole yeah, entire parcel is 48,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad Carla does. We're just going to be disturbing it. So we've, we have you filed a swip. swip. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Storm water. Um, I'm not Pollution sure what prevention. Yeah. Prevention. 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 Got it. That's with the EPA. So moved? So moved Second. and seconded. All in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think, I hope everyone thinks it was a useful night. I, I, I feel I feel pretty good about this one. Thank Very you. Thank you for your time. If you want any of these. The only other thing are the two sets of money. I did. I did. I did. Um, approval. John moves that we approve. Yes. <laughs> Seconds it. All in favor of approving the minutes. I read them carefully. They were a nice set, both of them. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn yes. by Dan. Seconded by Ann. Can I, I just a second on the minutes, John? Can John, I, can I ask you? John, get out the minutes and Dan seconded it. <laughs> hey. Are, yeah. are you okay for Please, Tuesday? Uh, the, this procedural yes. okay. thing yeah. where we uh, open it to public hearings and then close it and then you're not.